In today's video, here is a nice problem regarding functional equation. Here is the following setup for all a, b as integers. Here is the following application. We have f of f of a plus b equals f of a plus f of b. So our goal, we are going to determine all functions f, okay? So you guys, if you would like to give the try to spam pre to a solution, go ahead pause this video when you worry, come back to see the full solution, okay? Now let's go ahead and get started with this one. So the first observation that I'm going to pick up from this application, so I'm not going to calculate the obvious solutions. We are going to just apply the general case. So, but we are going to take only, we are going to give the obvious case on, for only one, for, but we are going to give the zero for either one, B or A, okay? And leave the other variable free. So let's set B equals zero, okay? Then this expression becomes in terms of A, which is F of F of A equals F of A plus F of zero, okay? So let's make it true for all A as an integer. So for all, x as an integer this one is going to be transferred into in terms of x f of x equals f of x plus f of zero okay so this is the first thing the second thing secondly we are going to give b equals one and leave a is free okay so i have the following i get here b equals one I get the following expression f of f of a plus number one which equals f of a plus f of one okay now the next thing up i'm going to plug uh, let's throw this one into this one let's calculate let's replace x with a plus number one into the previous expression so i get the following i get f of f of a plus number one which equals f. so i get f of a plus number one plus f of zero now here is a thing we get the same object which equals to two things here this one is giving us because i replaced x with a plus number one also this one is already habit okay which means i get this one equals to this one equals to this one so equals to f of a plus f of one okay Let's make it true for all x by replacing a with x here. So I get for all x as an integer. So I get f of f of x plus number one plus f of zero, which equals f of x plus f of one. Okay. Now let's bring the x term to the one side and the constant to the other side. So I get the following. I get f of x plus number one minus f of x which equals f of one minus f of zero okay so we already know this one is a constant we know we have this expression the consecutive integers f of x plus number one minus f of x equals a constant this one is automatically the the function is a linear function because we have a combination linear here so which means f of x is going to be written on this form mx plus p okay so we don't have to prove this one it's it's more simple to prove this one so assuming you have a claim you have this function then calculate this difference it will give you a constant okay so now let's get rid of this one and move on to the next step so it is where is m and and p as an integer okay so how to calculate that? I'm going to use the original expression which we have before, okay? So replacing a plus b with x here, replacing x with a plus b. So I get the following. I get f of f of a plus b, which equals f of, let's take this f of a plus b and insert it back into this one here. So I get here m, a plus b plus p like this okay by taking all these objects and insert it back into x okay so i will have the following i get m which is this one 
factor, I put all these things here inside of x. I will have m factor a plus b plus p, okay, plus another p, which is this one, which is the original one, okay. So entire thing equals to the co two consecutive functions. F of a will be replaced uh, with m a plus p. Another function, which is f of b, will be replaced with m b plus p. So the nice thing here, when we have p, will be cancelled out from both sides. Then I will left, I will be left with this one equals to this one. Let's sim simplify this one more. So this one I get m square here. Factor a plus b plus m p, which equals. Also, I will, I will have m as a common factor because I have m a and b here. So we'll have m factor a plus b plus the constant plus this p. So I get the coefficient a plus b at the left and the right, and also I get the constant m p and p. So I'm going to extract a nice equation system from this expression here. So I get m square by matching terms by, by doing like terms, matching terms by term. I get m square equals m. For the second expression, I get m p equals p. Here is the thing: be careful when when you do the like terms here. A plus b is a variable. Okay. You are going to take only the coefficient, m square equals m. But this one is a constant, you are going to take the whole thing, m p equals p. Okay, be careful, the common mistake when you take m equals 1, because you consider p as a variable, is a problem, okay? You will, you will miss one solution, okay? Don't do that. Now I will have, I will, I will work a little more here. So taking m to the left, I get m factor m minus number 1 equals 0. Taking also p to the left, I get a p as a common factor, p factor m minus number 1 equals 0. Here is a thing here. So we'll have two cases. If m different number number 1, which means m minus, m minus 1 not equal to 0. This one implies m must be equal to 0, because you have the product equal to 0, okay? m not equal to 1, which means m minus number 1 different than this one for the second expression, I get m not equal to 1, because I have the same thing here, m different than number 1. This implies p must be equal to 0, because we have the product equal to 0, okay? This is the first case. If m different than number 1, which means p equals 0, which is the first case, f of x equals 0, if m equals 0 and p equals 0. The second case, so the second case, if m minus number one equals to zero, okay, if m equals number one, which means m, m minus number one equals zero, which means m equals one. If m equals one, which means p different than zero, because you have a product, then also if m equals one, which means m different than zero, Now we'll have a second case. If m different than zero, so we are going to see this coefficient. This, this coefficient will be, which means the function is containing the order number one. So we get, get x here, but p different than zero. p will be free as an integer, okay? So now I get this final expression. So I will have two cases, f of x equals zero. If m equals 0 and p equals 0, the second case, if f of x equals x plus p, where is a p is a sum integer. p is a free at this time. A small observation here, m p equals p here. If this one is true, if m equals 0, which means p equals 0. Also, if m equals 1, I'll get p equals p, which means we'll have infinity money solutions for p. You can replace p with anything you want. You can replace p with any integer, okay? because it's true, since we get p equals p here. So I have done this problem, by the way, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and support the channel, and thank you for watching, I will see you next video, bye.